Hey everybody, I uh, just want to go through another example of wire sizing from rule number 4004. Um, this time though we're going to throw a couple of different things into it uh, just to get our feel for those tables 1 to 4 as well as this time we're also going to size a breaker based on 14104, right? 14104 tells me how to size an overcurrent then takes me to table 13 where I pick my overcurrent out. Right, so do the same thing as we did the last time. This time we're going to be in question number 27 on page 36 of your workbook. Uh, we're going to start with a 65 amp load, um, but to get there we're going to have to go through an area that's 35 degrees. Uh, we're going to have seven conductors total inside of that conduit that's going to be running RW90, and this time everything is 90 degree rated terminations. Right, so 90 degree rated terminations means the panel, the equipment is all rated for 90 degrees. So now when we go into our tables, we're going to be looking in that 90 degree column, right? So, again, start off over here, 65 amp load. That's what we're going to be starting with. We need to get it there. So, of course, we're going to have to run some wire to get over to it. This is where we find our wire, right? In order to figure out what wire size we need, we have to take into account tables 5A and C that tells us based on the heat, based on the number of conductors, how do I start to derate this thing, right? So table 5A. It's going to give us a number. So if I take 35 degrees, uh, I need to make sure that I'm looking in the proper column for what that derating factor is. Table 5A, I'm looking in the 90 degree column. At 35 degrees Celsius, which gives me a factor of 0 0.96. Right? Table 5C. Now it just says, how many conductors do I have? We look for that range. We find seven conductors. Gives me a derating factor of 0 0.7. Right? If I want to know the combined correction factor that I'm going to use for this overall, I'll multiply those two things together. 0.96 times 0.7 gives me an overall correction factor. Of 0 0.672. Right, so this is the number that I'm going to use to figure out what is the required ampacity of this wire and also once we find that wire what is the allowable ampacity of that wire. So in order to find the allowable or the um, required ampacity of this wire I'm going to divide by my correction factor of 0 0.672 which is going to give me a number of 96.73. 96.73 amps. Right, that's what I need this wire to be able to handle. If I take 96.73 amps, now I'm going to take that to table 2 again. We're still dealing with copper conductors. And now instead of looking in the 75 degree column like we have been, we're going to move over to the 90 degree column. Right? Everything's rated for 90 degrees, means it can handle more heat. So table 2, the 90 degree column, if I look for something that's 96.73 amps or bigger, the next one up is a number 3, which is good for 115 amps. So that'd be under 30 degrees Celsius with not more than 3, as table 2 says. But we have our 0.672 correction factor. So now I'm going to bring that back down to figure out what the actual allowable ampacity of this number 2 is. So I would take my current 115 amps, which is what it's rated for, times my correction factor is going to give me 77.28 amps. Right? Now, this is the number when we're using 14104. What is the breaker there to do? The breaker is there to protect this wire. So under these conditions, 115 amp number 3 can really only handle 77.28 amps. That's what I'm sizing my breaker for. Table 13, I need a breaker that's going to allow only 77.28 amps, but like the rule says, 14104, that it falls into that range. That's how table 13 is arranged. So I can actually go up on this one, right? So in that range, 77.28 amps, I'm going to pick an 80 amp overcurrent. Alright, so thanks very much for that and uh, we'll see you on the next one.